Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And today I'm going to take a first gen Gyarados card and turn it into an awesome sculpture. And today I'm going to make a first gen Gyarados card and turn it into an awesome sculpture. So once I've got my card sized and printed out, I can get straight to the choppy choppy. However, if there was ever a time for a fresh scalpel blade, this is it. Now I find a good rule of thumb is that if you ruin your thumb, you're good. Otherwise, it's just a case of cutting, chopping, and gluing until I'm left with a recreation good enough to justify a cease and desist order from the Pokemon Company. At this point my card is basically finished and the only thing I need left to do is give it a nice shiny gloss varnish top coat. And then we're on to Sculpted Gary. Now I want my card to be sitting at a roughly 34.72 degree angle which I shouldn't need to tell you is the optimal card viewing angle. So to make sure that my Gary sculpture sits at this aforementioned angle, I'll add a couple of screws to the bottom of my sculpting block which should lift it up. Then it's just a case of bulking up the frame and adding my clay over top. Then I'll start adding little wormy dealies along the length of the body, which I can then blend together to create those sought after water dragon segmentations. Gyarados is essentially a serpentine version of the Michelin Man, so I really want to highlight each of those body sections. And once I'm happy with the shape, I can crack out my dear sweet friend 99.9% .9 alcohol to help smooth out any of my tooling lines or fingerprints. Gerald Dose doesn't really have a whole lot of surface detail, so making sure what's there is crisp and clean is pretty important to the final product. Otherwise, once I'm happy with what I have, I can throw the entire thing in the oven to lock it all in place before I get started on the head. I like to bake my projects regularly whenever I finish a section, since it not only makes sure that I can't squish it by accident, but because it also forces me to move on to the next section rather than fussing over perfecting details. So if you notice a bunch of mistakes, you can sleep easily knowing that they're really intentional. Now at this point, I've got the shape of Jerry's mouth mostly flushed out and I can start adding some of the detail on top. There are so many different iterations of this exact same pocket monster and I'd like to think that I dipped my pen in an awful lot of concept artists inks to arrive at the final product I end up with here. Fortunately, however, with each subsequent detail that I add, it starts to look a little less like a screaming worm and a little bit more like a mighty sea serpent. In fact, once I add Poseidon's pointy trident crown, I go so far as to say that this is almost borderline recognizable. Now to make his matching ear fins, I've made myself a tiny paper template that I can trace onto a thin piece of clay before curing them in the oven and gluing them in place. Then a couple long, thin, wormy dealies will act as his neckbeard Fu Manchu before adding the remaining dorsal fin. Then he's basically done and I can get started on making a real splash. So this is monster clay and it's the tits. It's a wax based clay that is a sculptor's dream to work with, but it will never dry out or cure so it's about as permanent as one of JLo's marriages. It is, however, perfect for making a mold, so that's what I'm doing here. The idea is to make a chocolate milk splash using this stuff, then make a silicone mold and cast it with resin. I'll use Gary in the card to give me the right size, then it's just a case of sculpting an appropriately splashy looking... uh... splash, I guess. Unlike Scopey or Cosplay, at room temperature, even thin sheets of this stuff is capable of supporting its own weight without deforming, so I don't need to worry about adding any armature underneath. And once I've finished making a silicone mold, I can just peel it out and reuse it in another project. Additionally, because it's a wax-based clay, I can use a butane torch to soften the top to give it a nice, smooth finish. 
To make a mold, I'm going to take this perfectly sized, perfectly shaped soup cup. Then I can cut it in half so that I have a perfectly sized, perfectly shaped soup sleeve that gets placed over top of my chocolate wave and held in place with a little bit of hot glue. The silicone that I have is a quick reaction two-part mix ideal for this sort of work and my sort of personality. You can find lots of different kinds of silicone that set at different speeds. So naturally, I purchased the fastest setting silicone that I could find, knowing that, like a struggling doctor, I have zero patience. This particular mix has a working time of 8 minutes and a demold time of 4 hours. Then with the mold set and the chocolate center removed, I can mix up a batch of ocean blue resin. This then gets poured slowly into the mold ensuring that I get it into all the cracks, crannies and crevices. And I'll also make sure to squish and deform the mold to make sure that any air bubbles get forced out before slowly filling the mold to the top. Then I can set this aside for 24 hours to cure before popping it out to see just how well the mold worked. Many hours later. And I gotta say, given that this was my first time casting something that wasn't a perfectly round shape, I am chuffed to bits. Otherwise, attaching it to the card is easy to do with the help of a little UV resin. This will fill in any space around the wave in the card, and it can also be brushed over the surface of the resin wave to give it a bit more of that Maybelline gloss. Now, with my Noodly Waterboy finished and my card all but ready, I need something to mount it on. So after tossing out a few ideas, I settled on making a wave out of some clear perspex. With the perspex cut to size, I jerry-rigged a bending jig using some dowel and a table leg. Then I could figure out where the card would sit on the sheet and decide how much I want to bend. And then I can use a heat gun to slowly bend the perspex into the shape that I want. Once I'm happy with the shape of my sheet, I can get cracking on the wave itself. To start, I'll bulk out the bottom of the sheet by adding a few layers of UV resin, which will add a bit of thickness to the sheet, but also help to make it a little bit more bottom heavy. This should make my life a little bit easier when it comes time to add the Gyarados. The wave itself is going to be made out of silicone, isopropyl alcohol, and a little bit of blue ink. When mixed together, you're left with a suspiciously delicious looking blueberry jam that gets spread haphazardly over the surface of the perspex. I'll then keep building up the layers as the one before it starts to dry, which will let me get a pretty sweet looking wave shape. Now while that's drying, I can get started on the painting. Now Gyarados doesn't have a whole lot of color, so I'll start out by basing it with a beige primer, then I can add all the necessary colors that really start to bring the whole thing together. Now while I'm slapping on a few different layers of paint, let me take a minute to slap some names on the screen of the people that make these videos possible. So a big thank you to my newest patrons, Hannah Stuker, Angie Rigby, Amber DeLapp, Harpo the Marks, Melanie DeBest, and Kira Mandan. Making these tiny nerdy things takes a huge amount of time, and it's thanks to the support of my wonderful patrons that I'm able to keep making these silly videos every week. If you'd like to help out, then consider subscribing, commenting, hitting that like button, and sharing this video. Now as far as Jerry is doing, we're just about finished with the painting and he's looking hella dope. But something is missing. It's small, but it's not tiny, and this isn't small nerdy things, it's tiny nerdy things. So let's make a tiny nerdy Magikarp. I figured the easiest way to make a tiny Magikarp was by making a little ball, cutting it in half and giving it a goofy looking goldfish face. Then I made another ball, cut it in half and added a tail and stuck those two pieces together creating a tiny adorable magical carp. 
Then all I needed to do was slap a couple coats of paint on it and I'd say we've hit our tiny nerdy thing quota for the week. So all that's left to do is start assembling stuff. A couple dots of hot glue will hold my card on the stand and my Gyarados on the card. Then I can make a tiny water splash out of UV resin. Jerry is a water noodle bursting out of the ocean, so I'll cover him in some gloss varnish to give him that fresh out of the ocean look before mixing up a batch of sea foam. The sea foam gets slathered onto all the tips of the waves and anywhere that I would expect to see sea foam. I often use this mix to make sea foam and it always looks great while it's wet but it dries a bit dull. To fix this you can add a tiny bit of white paint to the mix which will make sure it dries vibrant. However I like to add an extra step where I forget to do all that and come back once it's dried to repaint it using my most whitest white paint. I'll also take the time to add a little bit of white highlight to the water adding bits of white wherever I didn't want to add the foam. Otherwise, we are onto our glamour shots. There you go folks, I hope you enjoyed this one as I think it turned out pretty swell. Anyways, let me know what you think down below and what you'd like to see next. If you like this sort of Pokemon card thing, then let me know which card you think would work well for another build. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.